today we're talking about recruiting and we're going to move you towards your goal, talking about how to build your team. Last week we talked about kind of some recruiting basics. We talked about the importance of building a team. I have a lot of members that are thinking, you know, um, I'm just working on my sales right now. I'm not ready for recruiting. I'm not ready to be a team leader, that kind of stuff. And I really want you guys to get that out of your mind because one of the best things I ever did was recruit right away. And I was able to say, I don't know what I'm doing, but we're going to learn it together. So you don't need to feel like you have to know everything before you start adding members to your team. Um, you certainly, you know, don't have to have it all together, so to speak, in order to be a great leader. We talked about the traits of being a great leader in our leadership uh, training last week, and none of it said you have to be perfect or you have to be, you know, completely together. You have to whatever. It's, no, you have to be passionate about your business, yourself, your company, your products, and helping other people. Like, like that is it. And when you have all those things together, everything else follows suit, and it just kind of all fits together. Today, we're going to be talking about what I call recruiting green lights, because oftentimes opportunities arise that we don't, we don't know, we don't see. If you are focused all the time on boosting your sales, or even if you're focused all the time on recruiting, sometimes you will still miss these green lights. And let me see if it will change here. So green lights, these are comments, questions, things that come up in just idle conversation that may be asking for more information about the business opportunity. A lot of times we miss them because they are so subtle. They aren't directly related to the opportunity. And so what I want you to do this week is to listen to these. I, I, we had 10 and we added a couple more uh, in the end. And I, you know, I had this great idea that I was going to do all brand new ones. But the thing is, these are the ones we need to learn. These are the most common. These are the ones that when you hear these things, whether you are standing in line at Target, whether you are in the ordering room of a party, whether you are at a cookout with, you know, or a birthday party with your kids, like wherever, you may hear these things. And so what I've done here is I've also I've given you the green light, but also your best response to it because I want you to think about an actual uh, uh, actual traffic light there. So you get the green light. What you say next is the yellow. And then what they say next is whether we're going to actually hit a red light or whether we're going to get to coast through that yellow and head on to, to the recruiting opportunity. All right. So let's start with this one. How much money do you make? All right. So when you're talking about your business, and this often happens with your friends, with your family, uh, with people that kind of know you. Most strangers aren't going to come right out and say, how much money do you make? Some will. Um, and the thing is, they don't care anything about how much money you make. They want to know how much money they could make. In this economy, in this day and age, in this you know unsettled economy that we have going on right now, people are focused on money. And there is nobody that I know of that's standing around there thinking, gosh, I have so much money, I just don't even know what to do with myself, right? So everybody is looking for an opportunity to make a little bit more. But it, they want to know what that, what that is. And they want it in clear cut, you know, how much money do you make? The problem, though, is there's no easy answer for that, right? And so sometimes you can say, oh my gosh, well, I made $5,000 last month, but what if you didn't? What if you made $200 last month, right? And you're working your tail off, but that, you're in the growing phase. I mean, most people don't start making six figures. You know, we work up to that. So when someone says, you know, how much money do you make? Your best response is to not give an answer that is definitive either way. Because here's the other thing too, you say 200 bucks to some people, that's not worth it. To other people, that's the difference of whether they're going to be able to put gas in the car or put dinner on the table or make their rent this month. So because people are so vastly different, you don't want to give an answer, not to mention what you make in April may be different than what you make in May, right? We've, it's a roller coaster. We've all had real big months. We've all had really low months. It's part of the industry. So when someone says, how much money do you make? Here's the response you want to have, and this is the reason why. So you say, the great part about this business is that I control how much I make by how much I work. Anytime I need a little extra, I have the power to give myself a raise. 
Now here's the thing, that response is 100% accurate. Accurate. This business is based on how you work. Profit producing activities though, not just time consuming ones. You have people that are like, Lindsay, I worked all day and I didn't make a penny. I want to know what you did. How many people did you talk to face to face? Okay, there, there's our question. How many people that are interested in your business? Did you qualify them first? Do you, you know, all these many questions. Working is a relative term. Uh, you know, I want to know what you did. But the response like this says, I control how much I make by how much I work. This is not get rich quick. This is not get rich easy. It's simple, but it is not easy. There is a difference and you need to set the tone early on that this business is about working. It is network marketing, not sit on the couch marketing. Um, so you want to plant that seed. The other thing is we really do have the ability to give ourselves a raise. You can book another party. You can, you know, run a sale. You can recruit somebody new. Those are all things that you control that you can do that give you a raise. Now, to somebody who has never been in this industry or, you know, is used to just going to a nine to five, that sounds pretty amazing, right? This is an absolutely accurate statement. Um, and it's what, you know, again, it's what they say next that's going to take it one step further. All right. Along the same lines, how about how many parties do you do each week? Well, this one, just like number one, they really don't care how many times you party. They want to know how many times they would have to party. You know, some companies have quotas and back in the day, back in the, the pyramid scheme days, they used to have actual benchmark type quotas that people had to have. And also think about people who are used to corporate America or used to retail or the food industry or whatnot. They have to have a certain amount of hours and a certain amount of shifts in order to keep their job. So when someone asks, you know, how many parties do you do or how often are you going away from the house and stuff like that, this response, again, just like the first one, I do two parties a week because it is what works best for mine and my family's schedule and helps me build my business quickly. Hopefully, this is an accurate statement. At Party Plenty, was, we believe that one party a week is maintaining a business and two parties a week is building a business. Parties are still the lifeline of the industry. Yes, you can have online stuff. Yes, you can sell door to door. Yes, you can have you know online orders and all that kind of stuff. I still firmly settled, firmly rooted in that parties are the lifeline to your business and gonna get you to point A to point B faster. So one party a week is maintaining a business. That means, yep, you're a consultant, you're doing one party a week, that's it. Two parties a week is building a business and is gonna get you closer to your goals. So with this response, here's what this does. Number one, it says I do two parties a week because it is what works best for my and my family schedule, okay? accurate. You need to sit down with your family, look at your calendar. How often can you, can you party? I am not an advocate for doing five or six parties a week. Some people do, and I think that's great. And if maybe a majority of those or some of those are online, then you can absolutely manage that. No problem. But I'm talking about the in-home face-to-face -face parties. Um, you know, so I, I said two parties a week, building a business. So you acknowledge that it's what works for your business. The other thing too is by saying, I do two parties a week, you show stability, okay? The thing is, when people are asking about money, the power bill comes every month, whether we have a party or not. The rent is due every month, whether we recruit somebody new or not. So you have to, you know, but the thing is, we, we don't always have the same amount of parties. We don't always have the same amount of sales, stuff like that, so how do you, find that stability and how do you show that stability? And this is how you make sure that you are consistently holding these two parties a week. It's gonna get you as close to that goal as possible. Um, but so by saying I do two parties a week, you're showing stability. You're, first of all, you're, you're maintaining stability. You have the stability in your business. If you're doing eight parties a month at bare bones minimum, think about it. If you've got, let's say you've got 10 people at every party. So we're talking about getting in front of, what is that, 80 people? If you just do the law of averages in our industry, one in five people is gonna book a party from that. So we're talking, I'm trying to do my math here. So we're talking, what is that, six parties, eight parties um, that you can book, and then one in 10 is interested in the business. That's a potential eight recruits every single month. 
yeah, that, that's the business. Um, so, you know, focus on those two parties per week. But when we're talking about green lights, I keep going down the rabbit hole. When we talk about these green lights, when someone says, how many parties do you do? You not only want to have this as your response, but you want to have it to be true for you as well. Um, so I do two parties a week because it's where it works best for my family and it's helping me build my business quickly. So this is setting the tone as a leader for this is how you build your business quickly. This is what I have been preaching and teaching since 2003. Yes, and it, it is still. All right, so what does it cost to get started in something like this? So, you know, imagine you're sitting at a birthday party for a child and whatever, and, and you're talking about your business, and someone says, you know, what did it cost to get started in something like that? That's a green light. That's a huge green light. You may think it's just making idle conversation or somebody just being curious. But the thing is, like every other green light, they want to know what it would cost if they were going to get involved. It blows people's minds when you're like, no, you, you can own a business for, you know, $100 or $49 or, I mean, we've got some that are $20. But yeah, you, you can own a business for $20. McDonald's, you have to pay a million dollars just for a licensing franchise fee just to use the name. Then you have to go find, the, you know, get the building and have it built and have, you know, all that kind of stuff. So the idea of it costing less than $100, less than $1,000, less than $10,000 to some people is kind of mind blowing. So when someone says, you know, what does it cost to get started? Your response should be, we have several different kit options and different price ranges and even the opportunity to earn the kit. Now, here's the thing. Let's say you're like, no, Lindsay, we only have one kit option. I'm still going to suggest that you say that there are different options because if you don't know this person very well, and you don't know if they're talking about themselves, their brother, their sister, their mother, their, you know, whatever, you don't want to cancel anybody out or make it sound too easy or too hard. All right. So when it comes to getting started, and, and here's the other thing too, let's say that you have a $99 startup kit. Okay. Let's just go with round numbers. If you tell somebody it costs $99 to get started in the business and they're like, oh, okay, they're going to pay $99 to get started in the business. We know, guys, there's, there's more work to it than that, okay? Do you have a website feed? Do you need business cards? Do you need samples? Do you need business card baggies? Do you need sample containers? Do you need, you know, I mean, all these other things. Are you going to blog about it so that you can have SEO? So now we're talking about hosting and a domain. You, everybody needs a domain even if you're not doing a blog. So the thing is, this is one of those things where there is no cut and dry answer. It may only cost you $99 for your kit, but you don't want to set somebody up to be frustrated when it in fact ends up costing $2.99 by the time that they are finished because there's all these other things that we need to kind of set up. Now, here's the thing. To somebody who's been in corporate America who, you know, knows that it costs a million dollars to get, you know, a franchise from McDonald's, even $2.99 is so super economical. It's still a fraction of what most businesses cost. However, if you have started off by saying it's $99, when it suddenly is more than that, they're going to get frustrated. So when someone asks about the money to get started, you can still talk about different kit options, different price ranges, and even the opportunity to earn the kit, which is the kickoff party uh, that I have spoken about before. And we have plenty of training on that. I 100% disagree with ever purchasing anybody's kit ever, 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 ever. Okay. Number one, you want people to be invested. They've got to have something. So whether it is a hundred dollars that they've invested, whether it's a thousand dollars they've invested, whatever, they need to have some investment in there. And then one of my favorite phrases too, is if you've had to talk them into joining, if they, if you're having to pay for it, because they're still on the fence and you're like, oh, well, just here, I'll buy the kit and you try it out or whatever. If you have to talk them into joining, you're going to have to talk them into selling, you're going to have to talk them into recruiting, you're going to exhaust yourself. People need to be invested. So give them an opportunity to be. I have to speed up. All right, number four, how does your husband feel about doing this? Here's the thing. We have a lot of stay-at-home moms in this industry. We have a lot of women who already work outside the home. So an idea of having another business if they have a husband, it's like, really? Because it's going to disrupt. I can tell you, Mike and I have had a major change. He ended up getting an out of the house office. Mike and I have worked together for eight years in our home office. He has one next, you know, right next door is his office. And this one was mine. 
And about six weeks ago, he and a buddy got an actual outdoor office. And it has been, and it's right across town, but still, it has been quite an adjustment. And so I see now how, you know, even because now I'm the one at home and I'm like kind of freaking out about, you know, the schedule and stuff. Um, but so it is an adjustment. So what she's really asking is how does she convince her husband? I can totally, totally relate to this with the change that we've got. And here is my response that I am living, breathing, doing, and it works. And you say it took some adjusting as would any change. We learn the importance of supporting each other in anything that we choose to do. Absolutely, this is important. It boils down to communication. It boils down to prioritization. Um, you know, for the most part, the people that we love, they want us to be happy. And if this business is going to make you happy, he'll be supportive. But, you know, you have some adjusting there. Um, so you just want to acknowledge it. I've got a whole training. If you don't have a husband or child, you're, you're good to just, just party when you want to. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fine. As far as like the other family members and stuff, this really kind of goes, goes to anybody. If it's a, you know, a best friend that doesn't want you to, you know, do or a roommate or, or whatever, you know, it just, it takes a little bit of adjusting for the people in your life because you're, you're going to be working more. You're going to have, you know, more things that you have to do. So, um, Oh, I see. So how do you tell somebody who has a husband how you do it without a husband? I, you know, what? I still, I think this answer, you know, still just say, you know, because even though you're not currently living it, the industry is. And so you can say, you know, when they say, well, how do I convince my husband? You can say, you know what? I have ladies on my team or ladies within my company who have, you know, had to make this adjustment and what they have found is. Um, so, you know, you can kind of, kind of relay it to or relate it to someone who is or has. Number five, how long have you been doing these parties? So this is actually kind of a two part question. It is, you know, first of all, again, they don't care how long you've actually been doing the party. So you can kind of see how these are questions where they are asking you something but it's really that, you know, the number one radio station, WIIFM, what's in it for me? That's kind of how these questions go. So if they're asking how long you've been in the business, they really want to know either how long it take, it, did it take you to, you know, get good at it or to learn it all or whatever, or are they going to be like this when they are brand new too? So, you know, the thing with this is you just want to tell them the truth, but you follow it with, and I learn new things every single day about my business because that is an, also an accurate statement. So whether you have been in for a month, you know, tell them I, you know, I signed up a month ago and every day I'm learning something new. I have been in the industry for 18 years, 17, 18 years. And I can honestly say, and I learn something new every single day. So when someone asks how long you've been in the business, just tell them, just tell them the truth, but make sure that you follow it with, and you learn something new every day. The reason why here is because there are people who feel like they have to know everything, understand everything, experience it, whatever, before they can even kind of get started. I have yet to see a live party uh, in my own company, that, you know, the company that I work for. Um, people are like, you know, oh, I need to see a party in real life, or I want to see my, never saw one, still never saw one. Um, it's been, you know, 17, 18 years, whatever, still never saw one from my company. The story, you know, with the lady that didn't, that didn't follow up. Um, but you, you can't let that get in your way that you, you know, don't know everything because you'll end up with paralysis analysis, which we've talked about before, um, and never get started. So if someone asks how long you've been in the business, just tell them the truth. And here's the other thing too, this is kind of exciting because we do learn new stuff every day, new cool things that are going to help move our business forward. I mean, I've gotten a ton of stuff from the last week that I did the Facebook live, how to do a home party on Facebook live. People are loving that. Um, you know, and that's just a, a brand new training. People who have been in the industry longer than I have are excited about that training. So, you know, it's an exciting thing to know that we learn new stuff all the time. Now this one is important and I have got to speed up. Um, green line number six, do you need any help setting up? Here's the thing. I know that you don't need help setting up. We never need help setting up. Goodness, no, we can do this in our sleep, right? But there's always going to be someone who asks, and this is a very, very, very important thing because you found the helper. So you want to let her help you, even though you don't need the help, even though it may slow you down, even though, you know, whatever, 
you found the helper and that's one of the best traits to this business is that you want to help people. You want to help people find a solution to whatever it is that your product fits, whether it's skincare or handbags or uh, personal injury uh, protection or, you know, whatever. So let her help you. And then when you see her looking at things, you can say, you know, before I became a consultant, that was one of my favorite products. Now I can get it at wholesale every time I need it. And I get to make money just for telling people how much I love it. That wraps up accurately exactly what it is we do. So when you find that helper, when you find that person that, that says, do you need some help? Sure. Let her carry something in. Say, well, you know, when you set this on the table, like, you know, whatever, they're going to flip through stuff. They're going to look at things, sniff things, taste things, whatever kind of company you're in. You want to, you know, set that tone because, again, you have found a helper. And number seven, how many consultants are there here? This is another what's in it for me. They want to know, is there going to be enough business for them in this town? There is this wild excuse that we have made up in this industry that things can be oversaturated, that we can have too many consultants in an area. Oh my gosh, everybody I know is a consultant for whatever. You guys, have you ever heard anybody that's like, well, my dream was really to be an attorney, but there's just so darn many of them right? No. Do you think that girl that inspired me so much this Saturday cared anything about that there are other people trying to be Supreme Court justice? Like, no, she didn't care. So don't let that be your excuse. There's always enough business for everybody if you're working the business and if you're doing it correctly and if you're taking care of people. So if they say, you know, how many people do you have? You can say whether it's one person, 100 people, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because even if you've got a thousand people, I guarantee you 50 of them are actually working their business. So we have a phenomenal team of ladies here working together to help new consultants join us. That is what you need to have as the sisterhood so that you under, they understand it doesn't matter how many people are there. And use, use the attorney analogy. I mean, you know, again, I've never had anybody be like, oh, well, I wanted to be an attorney, but we don't know. So for, for whatever reason, we've given that excuse to ours. Um, number eight, how or where did you receive your training? If you're coming from corporate America, people don't know, and we don't really have formal direct sales training. You have my site, your corporate office is giving you some, but to somebody who, you know, like my cousin who just got her college degree, she's like, where did you learn all this stuff? They want to know how they are going to learn. And so you want to tell them your company's got great opportunities. If you do meetings, you do conference calls, you do webinars, invite them to the party plan divas community. Like, let them know because here's the thing people want to know so that they're not left high and dry so that they you know know where they're going to learn what it is they need to know and they're not going to be on their own a lot of times people ask that if they have been in the industry before and been left uh, by a leader number nine is pretty subtle and you've probably heard of this one all my friends think i should get into something like this this is a very subtle green light and the thing is, is she wants to know from you do you think she would be good at it because you're the expert our friends tell us all kinds of stuff so you know but you're the expert do you think she would really be good at this and so if you hear that you say you know what i bet you would be and i'd love to talk to you about it more can you stay a few minutes after the show or whatever the reason why here is because she's already planted that seed you need to watch her during this party or during the the cookout or during the you know whatever it may be because you'll be able to find and see the the traits that her friends are probably talking about so is she the helper? Is she the, the one that finishes people's sentences because she knows everything? Is she the supporter? Is she the, you know, the, the hostess, the one that's kind of taking care of everybody, that kind of stuff. So later when you have the conversation with her, you can say, you know, that, that opportunity that you had where the person was asking a question, you leaned over and helped them find her or whatever, you know, your, your friends think you're going to be good at it because you're really great at helping people. That's why you would make a great consultant. So you can kind of tie it in. But that one is a super, super subtle green light um, that is actually, actually huge. We just, you know, chances are we missed it. Now, number 10, I don't think I could ever do a party as well as you do. So this is a total blessing and a curse. You finished your party, you finished your presentation, whatever. And they're like, oh my God, you're so good at this. I used to take that like a sponge. I would be like, oh, thank you. Ha ha. Yes, I know. I'm, you know, I'm pretty good. Whatever. You know, but the thing is you have intimidated that person. That's why I say it's important in the party presentation. When I say mess up sometimes, forget things, 
don't try to be perfect all the time because it makes it intimidating when you are. So, you know, make sure that you, you don't look like a robot. You don't look perfect. If someone still says that you can say, thank you. I appreciate that, but I could teach you to be even better. Um, because the thing is, you know what? Leadership is like parenting. Like we may be good, but we want our kids to be better. And that is kind of what we do in leadership. And again, what they say after this is whether they were literally just making conversation or if they are actually in, you know, interested in the business. All right. So some new ones. How about my friend used to do parties like this? So I heard this one a lot and I can't believe I haven't thought of this one before. When, when somebody saying that you're like, okay, tell me more about that. Like you want, you need to know more about that. What they're really saying, you know, is that, that somebody, but, but why? So why did it used to be? want to be very, very cautious with this one, all right? Because you don't want this to turn negatively. The reason why people get out of this industry, there's, there's a couple of them and none of them are good, right? It can be that a, a leader left them. It can be that the company closed. Um, it can be that, you know, they just never got off the ground. You have to be very, very careful to make sure this one doesn't spiral out of control. But when they have a friend who has been in the industry or done the parties or whatever, and the fact that you're talking to them, it's a past tense, you want to say, you know, did she love it? Okay. And that gives her an opportunity to go, well, she did, but yada, yada, yada. When that happens and it will, then you get to overcome. And that's what we're going to be talking about next week is how to overcome recruiting objections. Because again, we got our green light going to yellow. This is whether it's going to red or whether we're going to coast through. So the red light is going to be the objection. So if they say, you know, I, did, uh, or I knew somebody or even the last one, which is I used to do parties like this. We're going to talk about this more next week, but this is one that you have to really tread lightly on. When they say, I used to do it, then you go, oh my gosh, then you know how fun this can be. Why did you ever stop? And again, you have to keep this light. You have to keep this, you know, whatever, because you don't want them to go down the rabbit hole of negativity as to why it didn't work. But let's say that they say, oh, my company closed or, you know, whatever. And you go, oh my gosh, that is so, I mean, that's one of the worst things. It's so disheartening. Uh, but it, you know, it's a fact of, of what happens in the industry. So you go, oh my gosh, no, I am so sorry that that happened. Well, have you thought about getting back involved in the industry? Okay. Um, they say, well, my leader, you know, whatever. And you go, oh yeah, goodness. I, you know, I'm sorry about that. I have local meetings here that if you ever wanted to get back in the industry, you're welcome to come join us, you know, whatever. So you can see how you can turn what would be negative into a positive. All right. So sorry guys that I went over on my time. Here's what I want you to really just kind of to get and, and go back and, and read these and we've got it uh, written out on the site as well. But I want you to train yourself to listen for these green lights because a lot of times they are very, very subtle and we don't necessarily hear them as an opportunity for opportunity, right? But they, but they are, okay, and they can be. And so when you're, when you're a trained, remarkable recruiter and you're listening for these, then you'll hear them. Um, it is your job to listen very, very carefully and have that response. Don't have these as canned responses that are, you know, whatever. You put your personality in it. Put your, you know, your own feel, your own spin on each one of these so that it is very authentically you. But the thing is, when you have people who are asking these questions, saying these comments, whatever, your response and the conversation that flows afterwards is a way to invite people to be a part of your team, to offer the opportunity without being pushy, without being salesy, and in a way that builds the relationship each time. Um, because you can see too that each one of these, each one of these responses was a building block into another conversation. We'll